Today on Nerd Out, Noom Tech Update. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano, we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're doing a Noom Tech Update. It might be a little long, but just hang on for the ride. I would appreciate it. So let's get into it. So as you know, Noom is a, a fair music ecosystem on Cardano. We are in the process of building our artist portal. This is where artists can upload their, their music, get it distributed, and fractionalize uh, their music streaming royalties for investors and fans. So this is the, the main screen, and I'm, I'm, I've taken screenshots of our garage environment. Garage is kind of our our staging environment, you go from the garage to the main stage. Um, so this is garage, this is our welcome screen. You can create an account or you can just log in with any of your social networks, at least for now. And so the next step, it's gonna ask me what, what my stage name is. So I had no idea, so I asked ChatGPT. Uh, you know, for somebody like me who can't sing on key, and they said something like off key Katie, tone deaf Tom. And so I am now cringe noise. And so this is the next screen of onboarding in the artist portal where you give it a stage name. Of course, you can change all these later from the profile, but this is just kind of the flow we take you through when you onboard. Um, I then forgot to do a screenshot of asking what your primary role is. You know, are you the main singer? Are you the lyricist? I chose lyricist. Uh, the next screen is asking about your music genre, your primary music genre. Um, and so there's all these genres listed, and of course I chose comedy. And that's it. That's all onboarding is right now. You enter the new, new portal at that point, and you're taken to upload song for Cringe Noise. And on this screen, you can, of course, start uploading your songs, deciding whether or not you want to, to mint it, um, selecting all the different genres that apply to this song, all the moods, etc. cetera. Um, and then that'll take you through the, the minting process. I don't have screenshots for that right now, um, but I did want to show you kind of the profile page uh, for stuff like if you wanted to change your role or change your genre, things like that. There's also verification up here. We've we finished um, integrating with our KYC provider, so anybody that mints songs, we can verify that they are who they say they are. Uh, eventually, we'll have that integrated with um, some type of DID system. So after you do a KYC, we can issue a verified credential that we can apply to either your existing did or we'll create a did for you. Um, but that particular project was not Catalyst funded yet, so that kind of got pushed back a ways. Uh, we've also been working on the minting process. So the minting process is quite involved. Um, there's a lot of agreements and legal stuff that the user or the, the artist has to agree to up front. And then all their collaborators also have to agree that yes, this is the royalty split we've we've agreed to, etc. Um, you know, connecting wallets, processing payments, um, getting the song distributed on the streaming platforms, and then eventually, down at the bottom, they get an ISRC number generated for that, uh, and then the minting of the song happens. And there's kind of different backend statuses that are a little more detailed uh, on the front end, you'll just see the the kind of main dis distribution statuses, you know, undistributed, pending, and then whether or not it was um, rejected or, or minted, et cetera. Uh, we also recently completed the smart contract audit. This was a Catalyst funded thing, the team uh, did research on on several auditing companies, and we selected QuantStamp to conduct our audit. Uh, the issues they found during this audit were mostly performance-related improvements, optimizations we could do, 
um, some minor, some minor um, security issues. Nothing, nothing big. Uh, the the team corrected all of these issues, and we will be deploying a V2 of the smart contract along with the artist portal. So that's when we'll do that that switch. We'll do another um, multi sig to launch the smart contract again, and then uh, we'll deploy version two of that. The version one songs we've already minted. They're still legitimate there's there's nothing wrong with them so they'll still be collecting royalties uh, just as normal and there was some low risk stuff in the audit that we intentionally chose not to change like you know they said hey this might be an issue and we said eh, not really an issue for our use case um, and we will have this full report publicly available in the future i'm not sure exactly when the marketing team is going to release that but um anyway the smart contract audit is done. The, the Catalyst project is, um, I believe, closed out for that one. Uh, we're also still working on the stream token marketplace. So this is the follow-on project to the artist portal. Um, so the smart contract piece of that has been intentionally running ahead of the UI UX. So the UI UX design for this stream token marketplace is ongoing. Uh, the smart contracts for this one have been written in Aiken. Uh, the reason for that is it's very lightweight. The contracts come out optimized, very low fee. So again, we, we don't want to have very much overhead for this marketplace. It's just a, a place for you all to, um, to swap and trade your um, stream tokens. So that's kind of what we're designing it to be. And the idea here is this should be a fairly fast follow on to the artist portal because a lot of the technology, the low level um, integrating of smart contracts, building transactions, all that stuff, as you'll see in a minute, uh, that is all going to translate to the uh, stream token marketplace. Uh, mobile click through demo. So also as part of our MVP, we've been working on the mobile side. It's not going to be a full-blown app, but we wanted certain things where we could, you know, demonstrate the technology. So demonstrate a mobile app, streaming songs through it, etc. We're working through some issues with our Apple Dev account so we can deploy it to internal testers, but it's mostly done. In fact, I believe it is done. We just haven't been able to, to get it to our internal testers and... Once that happens, we can get you guys some some screenshots or maybe some some walkthrough videos of what's going on there. Uh, so now we're going to get into some low level stuff. So we're going to talk about Noom Chain and the Noom Transaction Builder. So these are some low level components that I've been working on. Again, all the code at at Noom is open source, so these tools um, are usable on any other projects that are, you know similar or doing similar things in the real fi space as noom um, it, it may be useful to you so if you need some way to build transactions for smart contracts that is kind of neat you can do that so noom chain is a chain indexer um, it's also a way to query the blockchain so it has a grpc api so it can work you can talk to it from any language so gRPC is came out of Google. It uses protocol buffers at the lowest level, and you can generate communication code for whatever language you like. So if you like Python, if you like Rust, if you like, you know, C sharp, you can generate an API, and then you can talk to it with that API client to Noom Chain to get all the information or submit transactions or you know kind of whatever you want through Noom Chain. And this is built on top of the Cogmios Ogmios toolchain. So again, Cogmios is a Catalyst-funded project to build a wrapper around Ogmios. Um, Ogmios is, is a low-level Haskell library that talks uh, to the, the many protocols on Cardano node directly. So it's just kind of we're just building layers up that make it easier and easier and easier to build additional stuff on Cardano. So a lot of people say, hey, Cardano is hard to build on. Well, that's kind of what we're trying to help the community with is building these layers so that 
the next project, the next project, the next project that comes along has an easier time than we have. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk a little bit more in depth about is the Noom Transaction Builder. Uh, I just finished a first pass of this. It is a domain specific language. It is built in Kotlin and it's used for building Cardano transactions. So, you know, a lot of times people will use in JavaScript, they'll use the Cardano serialization lib or the Cardano multi-platform lib from DC Spark. Those are great libraries, um, you know, low level Rust or they have JavaScript implementations of them. Uh, we wanted something bespoke for for Kotlin. So this is kind of an example of what that language looks like and how the code looks. So you've got transaction builder at the top and it takes in some protocol parameters. Then you can just specify your source UTXOs, any change address you want, output UTXOs. This is a very um, simple transaction. So this is the transaction we use to actually deploy the Noom smart contracts. Um, and this is deploying two out of the four. We can only fit um, two in a given transaction. So this is the um, the minting and locking transactions for the NFT, not the fractionalization piece. And then it's smart enough to know that you don't have to add a, an output UTXO for the change. The change is all ca calculated automatically based on specifying a this change address so it'll build actually this output utxo for you with all the correct numbers and values you also don't have to specify fees it'll calculate the min fees for you um, signatures that can either be hard-coded if you've done the, the signing yourself or you can also put some keys in here again this is my test code so i've just hard-coded some keys so it'll always always be the same for verifying so here's a little more complex transaction, and this one has is using an output UTXO with some inline data. And so you can see here is the actual inline data CBOR that would be generated, like if you're working from the, the command line. And this is the nice way it all gets specified in the, the DSL here. Um, I do have a little bit of cleanup on this whole, you know, storing the, the datum as a simple hex string. So we'll, we'll clean this stuff, stuff up later. And here's an example of minting some tokens. So you've got, um, you know, specifying the native asset with the policy name and the amount of them. And then it also is an example of putting in collateral. So collateral is, is a bit tricky normally. So here's an input collateral UTXO. You don't have to specify any return collateral. That all gets calculated automatically. You just give it a collateral return address. If there happens to be tokens on this input, it'll it'll take care of all that. Calculating change, whatever. Um, you can also specify required signers. And again, these transactions are going to spit out canonical CBOR. So they can directly be used to sign with a ledger or a treasure. Um, they don't, you don't have to uh, re reformat them like you do with the junk that Cardano CLI spits out where it's all in different orders. You know, they would have 11 way up at the top or, you know, actually the collateral UTXOs, they jam those at the very top of the transaction, even though they're, they're ID 13. Um, so canonical Seabor puts all of these in order. And again, it just makes signing easier. Uh, so that's all I've got. That's the, the Noom tech update. The team is still rocking and rolling, um, working very hard. And again, not just on the tech side, the, the, all of the teams from the legal team to the marketing team to uh, the management team, everybody is, is working very hard to, to get this stuff live and usable. And that's all I've got. With that, nerd out.